Hello, Pat Heverling. Hello. Hi. I can't hear you. Do you have um do you have your yeah, I unmuted myself, so can you hear me now? Yes, I can, yes. Hi, um, your name's familiar. Are you, are you a member? I've just joined not too long ago. Well, wonderful. Welcome to Val. I'm glad you're Thank you. Thank and you're with us. These are the Val members, I think. I don't know their names, but I'm delighted to see them. Let me make sure. Yeah! Holy cow! Oh, it's so nice to see you! Look at you! <laughs> Which one this nice is my you? studio here! <laughs> I know, sweetie, I know you, and I'm sorry, my, my senior brain is kind of... Oh, that's alright, that's alright. We have Tony. Tony! Cindy. You're Tony. I'm Taya. Tony? Hi, Tony. Hi. Yeah, everybody, this this is Taya Morton. Yeah. She is yeah. a member and she is Yeah. She lives in a in a assisted living. Yes, I live at Brook. You've seen Brookdale? Yeah, it's so she is assisted living. She's quarantined there. She can't she can't leave. <laughs> and uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah, she's stuck there. So with my the son is in yeah. Yeah. You her. might be stuck, but you have art. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. No, well, yes, I, I've covered my walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at it all. <laughs> and I'm running out of space. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm Where sorry. Are you from? Where are you from? I was born in Germany, okay. and I lived in England. I, I went to school in England, and then I Which came. Part to... of England. Oh, it was wonderful. I yeah. Loved it. Uh, I was a refugee from Germany. We escaped Hitler. You know, my family. Good for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was necessary. Yeah. <laughs> and how old were you? I was eleven, so yeah. I learned English pretty quickly. Uh, I went to a very good school in. Berlin, and that they did teach us English nursery rhymes. I, did, I knew Jack and Jill, called Jack and Jill. <laughs> Jack and Jill. Hey, there's our, there's our guest. Ron Warner has just joined How are us. you? And then I learned to pronounce correctly when I came to London. <laughs> Mark, this is Taya Morton. Yeah, um, hi. How, you're 90. 93. 93. Oh wow! Brilliant! That's fantastic, there. That's yeah, amazing. She is, she Thank is, you. She's in quarantine you? at Good where she lives. But, um, and you're speaking from Wales. I'm speaking from uh, yeah the border with Wales, so oh. I'm just on the border. Yeah, a couple of miles. But, and are uh, you in England? I do. Yeah, by about two England. miles. Yeah. About two miles. <laughs> Love all that. Let me just grab a seat. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, uh, great. Taya Lovely to see you. Taya uh, escaped Germany from Hitler in, in 1938. England. And oh, England wow. was my wonderful host. You know, I went, came to London. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. How yeah. long have you been there? I'm sorry. How many years have you been there then? Oh, uh, in, in, in England? I was. Uh, no, there. where you are now. 1952, and I came to this country, to the U.S. in 1952, wow. the West Coast, where my okay. dad, he had escaped from the uh, Shanghai, where the, the uh, GIs helped him get out. Oh, wow. You know, it was taken over by the Japanese, and then they lost the war. It's very That's complex. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, put it this way, it's, what is it, seven where you are? <laughs> where I you know, am it's, now? Do you, you, it's well, seven and you're 1 a.m., right? One in the morning, so <laughs> cheers. It's amazing. <laughs> Lots of coffee. Oh, well, I hope it's not hurting you. I hope that you keep on painting. I know you no, will. No, that's fine. I'll try and stay awake. I'll limber up, <laughs> see where we are. But yeah, everything's fine. It's not raining. Which is good. That's what you call dedication. Yeah, well, we'll see. You see how it works. 
See how it works, Tony. Yeah, this is weird because I, I normally um, uh, are controlling this really, so it's quite nice not to have to control things. I'm not in charge, which is good. I, Linda, is that you? It is. Leroy, there you've got your camera on you. Welcome. It's so good to see you tonight. And you as well. You as well. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Morning. Uh, well, morning. Well, it's not morning, but it is yeah. morning here now. Well, yeah. Hi, hi, Linda. How are you? You're right. I'm very well, thank you. And great communication we had going on. Yeah, brilliant. No, it's fantastic. I want Can to you ask Diane a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. In view of the fact that it's so late for Mark, do you think we can do his portion first and the business portion second? Certainly. I don't mind. I don't that mind. That would put him up like a little earlier, you know, since it's after midnight for him. <laughs> we could do that. No, it's fine. That's okay. Whatever you want to do, really. Whatever's easier. Uh, so well, how many? How many do you think? You don't don't know. You, no idea how many people. Um. Right now we've got 10 have yeah. signed on and we're just we we're not quite seven yeah. o'clock yet. Yeah. And Cindy, is that Cindy Bustamante? You don't have your um oh, my beeper just on mute. Can I, I can unmute? Turn off my beeper. Nope. Well, your pictures are all your pictures are all good. So you know it's it's perfect really. The connection's fantastic. Yes, it is. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I know it's good. My very first experience with Zoom or anything like it. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Fab. Yes, I'm wow. a novice. I don't do computers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do now. <laughs> you do now. Oh, that's brilliant. That's fab. Just trying to think. I can see. Uh, I can see someone's head just about there. <laughs> that's Arlene. <laughs> oh, yeah, Arlene. 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 Name the yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see your ceiling. Yeah, I saw a couple of head. Where do I see you, Arlene? <laughs> Raise your head, Arlene. <laughs> I don't know. I see a hand. Yeah, it's it's funny sometimes because you all got names, obviously, but sometimes it comes out as iPad or admin or John when it's actually Jane or something. So it sometimes doesn't really correspond. <laughs> yeah, Visual Art League, uh, that's me. I'm Diane. You yeah. know, email back and forth. You have to yeah. keep it visual, you see. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. okay. Is, is that, that like the man sure. who paints red trees, the, the one who does this? I love his, his tree scene. Oh, I've seen you know a lot I mean? of escapes. I forgot his, yeah. No, I mean, of the member. He's a member of Val. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it's seven o'clock. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the business meeting because I've got it all set up and it shouldn't take right. real long. Okay, yeah, that's only yes. some time for more people to join us there. Yes, yeah, no worries. It's not a problem. It's fine. Yeah, because there will be more people, I'm sure, that'll be. Yeah, no, I mean, that's yeah, fine. There's somebody no else. Problem. Somebody else just came in. Uh, oh, who's this? Adam Lancaster. Hello. I don't think he can hear you yet. He his, he's he has an X next to his connecting. How can I get a big screen of our artist? I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing, I guess. If you, um, well, afterwards, I think if you hover over me, you'll see three dots in the corner. Oh, I found, you, um, oh, I found it. Okay, I got it. You can, yeah, you can pin me or, or spotlight uh, the video. Yeah. But. Uh. Okay. We have Tony Wengler with us, too. I'm here. Hi. Hi, Hi Tony. Hi, <laughs> Tony. Hi. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of get started here. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Diane Wright. I'm president of the Visual Art League. Um, and it doesn't look like we have any guests, but we do have a new member, Pat Heverling, uh, is joining us tonight. Hello, Pat. Um, Wave to Pat. 
And, uh, welcome, Pat. I'm glad you've joined us. Okay. Yes, welcome. Um, what was that noise? Somebody's <laughs> <laughs> got some kids. I don't know. Someone's <laughs> being strangled. <laughs> I'd like to um, let everyone know that October marks the start of our new fiscal year. Uh, the Vail officers for the 2020-2021 fiscal year are myself as president, Lisa Chittenden, second vice president, uh, Jerry McKay, also known as Jam, who's with us tonight too. Uh, let's see, where's Lisa? There's Lisa. And there's there's Jam. Um, Jam is the treasurer. And uh, Christine Irizarry uh, has been our secretary and she'll continue to be our secretary. Uh, now we are in need of a first vice president. This role is in preparation for being president for the following year. Uh, this is crucial for the continuation of our fabulous organization. We'll be a part of a wonderful group of people who make decisions for Vail and keep it running. You'll have lots of support from other members of the board. So go to the Vail website. Let me see, I've got it right here. Okay, so that's what the Vail website looks like. You go over here uh, to Vail member documents. You click on that and it'll take you to a page uh, where you can find the, um, let me see. Oh, I think I need to do a share screen. Let's see. Where's share screen? Here we go. This one. Okay, can you see that? That's the Vail website. Oops. No. There it is. Uh, okay, so you're going over here to Vail yeah. member documents. Mm -hmm. And when you click on that and you go to that page, there's different documents on there for different roles within our organization. And you can read them through and see what role you'd like to play in our organization. Uh, so um, take a look at the vice president, first vice president role. And if you're interested, um, give me a call, give me a text, 214-683. One three zero four. You can find me on the uh, Val member sheet, the list. Get my information and contact me. Um, our directors for this fiscal year are Chuck Hendrickson, Dulcie Rook, Arlene Winters, Mary Carradine, Paula Haynes, and Alfredo Santesteban. Uh, these are great people. You know, they've been with Val. Uh, many of them have been with Val for a long time. They know their stuff and you join us and learn and um, you'll learn a lot um, and we can have up to nine directors so if you're interested in being a director again let me know look at that member list to get my information let me know uh, board meetings take place the first monday of the month at 7 p.m we we're currently doing them by way of zoom just like this um, and we are a great group of people so come come join in and members are always welcome to attend board meetings. Uh, just let me know so I can send you the link um, so you can become familiar with how everything works. We are also desperately in need of someone to handle our social media. Colleen Drew, uh, who has been handling this task, has, um, has moved to Maine. And so we are, are without someone to handle our Facebook page which is a very important part of our marketing. So if you love social media, we need you. Again, <laughs> give me a call, text me, email me. My number is on the uh, uh, membership list. And uh, uh, Jerry, I'm gonna have you help me with this. Uh, because of COVID-19 affecting hotel sales, um, all of the Greater Louisville um, art, or, uh, what is that? Greater Louisville Art Association, I think that is, organizations, were not able to receive the last 25% of our grants um, this year. However, y'all should know that because we have continued our programs through this pandemic, we've had our meetings, we've had our shows, we've had workshops, 
the city decided to give us the rest of our grant. Um, Jerry, do you know how much that was? Was that was I see off the top of my head, I think it was 2030. 2030, 2030 dollars, yeah. which is just fantastic. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's a big thank you to everyone who's curated shows, entered our art shows, gallery sat, produced workshops, found yours, and meeting speakers. And we're willing to do all this during this pandemic. A big thank you to the city for opening the MCL Grand and to the staff of the MCL Grand for keeping us safe and healthy with their COVID safety requirements. Together, we are a great team. Very good. Diane, if I can interrupt for just a minute and Absolutely. just say thank you for your leadership. This is our treasurer here. This is Jerry. Thank you. Jam. Thank you for leading us through all this COVID and, and allowing us to, to find ways to do this safely. So, you know, I think we have to acknowledge um, your leadership in this because you've really done a great job with that. Indeed. Thank yes, you. thank you, Diane. Yes, yes, thank you. You're welcome. It's, it's been a real trip. <laughs> I'm sure we've done it. And we've actually started doing things that I think we're going to continue with. Um, the board likes doing meetings by Zoom rather than driving at night. <laughs> and um, um, the um, sign up genius sign ups for the intakes and strikes, and that's worked out really good. So mm -hmm. we may just continue those things. So we've learned a lot. And putting our shows um, virtually online, too. We, we'll probably continue to do yeah. that gives us more exposure. So we've learned new things and we're growing bigger because of it. So, yay. Um, and Lisa, um, I wanna remind everybody to make sure all of your volunteer hours have been recorded in the VAL Volunteer Rewards Finder in the Art Gallery. Hours recorded in November 2019 through the end of November 2020, we'll determine our top volunteers for 2020 who will win a place in a special hallway show just for them. The winners will be announced in December. A new year for member rewards begins December 1st. And Lisa Chinden deserves so much credit for putting this program together and creating a rubric um, assigning uh, numbers of points for different volunteer um, activities, um, giving you know higher points to those desperately needed to fill things, and um, and I'm so grateful to her for handling this. It's it's wonderful, and we uh, look forward to this being a, a good program. It's our first year, so we hope it goes well, and and uh, continue from year to year and encourage people to volunteer and earn those um, reward hours. Okay, our current exhibits are Melodies of the Soul with the Circus of the Absurd installation. Okay, I have, let's see, put that away. And we're not to that yet. <laughs> Click it all over. I have this all set up. Technology. There's a night flyer. Screenshot. Oh, this is where Mark is coming to us from. Oh, I've got to do a screen share. Hang on. I'll show you that later. Oh, dear. That way. Oh, hey, here we go. Let me get back to was. Okay, screen share. We're doing this. I hope that's it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Our shows currently, we've got Melodies of the Soul going on and Circus of the Absurd installation. Uh, these are in the gallery. Uh, so make sure you check those out if you haven't already. And thank you to everyone who's contributed art for this show and also those who volunteered to help put it all together. Um, in January, in the gallery, our show will be World Cultures, Myths and Folklore. Very interesting theme, uh, lots of possibilities. Uh, so get ready for that show. And we need a curator. 
So consider that. Um, we will make sure you have a mentor and instructions. They're, again, they're online in those member documents, how to curate a gallery show. Um, so go ahead and check it out. If you've never curated before, um, you'll get plenty of help doing it. Um, so give that some thought. And the North Corridor coming up will be Baby It's Cold. So get ready with art for that show. And in our showcase, currently we have Unmasked, which is it's a great show. Um, these are not COVID-19 masks. <laughs> these are decorative masks, like for a masquerade. And they are wonderful. Nice variety of art, artistic masks. You gotta check it out if you haven't seen it already. And coming up after that will be a holiday theme. So any kind of end of the year holiday, um, anything kind of related to that is the theme. Uh, remember these need to be, I think no bigger than 16 by 20 in order to fit in the showcase. So be getting ready for, for that show too. Okay. Now, do, 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 do. hi. And now, oh, yeah. I am doing better. Yeah, um, I'm on. I'm on the vow meeting. Are you going to join? Oh, okay. <laughs> One more thing to do, of course. Okay, Tony. Can oh, we hold on? Hold mute? on. I think oh, that I was sorry. Joined with audio, not video. Um, sorry, sorry. No, Tony, you're fine. I see your picture, but some people don't seem to have um, video. Yeah, we just need uh, Tony to shut shut her sound off, to put oh. herself on mute so she can take her phone call. I, I just muted. I'm doing it now. Okay. Oh, here we go. Now back to screen share. Next up is... Okay, we've got a fundraiser coming up, Costa Vida, uh, October 27th. So mark your calendars from four to nine. Go, go get your dinner from Costa Vida. Say Visual Art League to them. So we will get 20% of your purchase goes to Vail. Okay, so mark your calendars for that. And now, um, did Alfredo join us? Is he here? I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him. Oh, Lorraine, Dulce, Nancy, Alice, a lot of people have joined us. That's great. Okay, doesn't look like he's here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the Artist of the Month Awards here. Which must be this one. Okay, October Artist of the Month Awards. Right here, share. Okay, can everybody see that? Oh, yes. Okay, second place. Lovely. Goes to Sherry yes. Barber for her painting pumpkins. Okay. The drum roll. <clears throat> First place goes to Adam Lancaster for White Buffalo Calf Leaping for oh, Final Justice. Yes. Congratulations, Adam. Oh, wow. you He's with us here. Oh, yes, thank you so much. Yep, you're welcome. Um, now, uh, Adam says that this the theme of this piece is biblical apocalyptic prophecy, but with a Native American social justice motif. Very interesting. Very well done. Okay, thank you. Okay. Somebody needs to mute. Yeah. What we're going to do now uh, is time for Mark's presentation. So I'd like everybody to mute themselves and we will let Mark take over and um, do his presentation. Okay. So to mute, go down to the left hand lower corner where it says mute, a little microphone, hit the up arrow and what does it say? I don't see. 
Turn it off. Okay, what do you do? You just click on it to turn it off? Yeah, so it's either, it's just either touch bottom, it. bottom left or top right, isn't it? It's just audio, you just strike through to mute. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, click on that microphone in the bottom left hand corner that will mute you. And then as Mark talks, um, he will be on screen all the time so we can see his presentation. And I have, um, how am I supposed to share the picture you sent me? Well, before you do that, let me say um, Mark should give us a little of his background. Oh, uh, I've got. I have it all, uh, yes, and everyone, oops, my, yeah, and everyone, it is one, but what, one seventeen in the morning, one seventeen a.m. Yes. where Mark is at, so we, um, he's coming to us from, from England. That's, ded that's dedication, I tell you. <laughs> yes, it is. We appreciate it so much. Welcome, Mark. No, you're welcome. Um, yeah, if you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, we did um, put all your information in an email that went out. If you can tell us a little bit, and we're ready for your demonstration. Everybody on mute now. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Diane. Thank you uh, very much for inviting me over. Um, obviously, you know, I, I've done lots of these um, probably over the last few months, quite a few really. Um, I generally do them to art societies and clubs up and down the UK. Um, normally I would go and demonstrate and offer workshops to these, um, these art societies and clubs in person, but um, obviously this seems to have taken over at the moment and hopefully when we get through it all, I'll go back to doing that. But there's something quite nice as well, I think, about, about doing this and inviting you into my studio. So hopefully you can see everything okay. Um, I've invested in a, an Ethernet cable that comes out from the house into the studio so that the signal's not Wi-Fi, it's brilliant. And then I've got a HD camera, so hopefully you can see uh, everything okay. So my name is Mark Warner, and um, I was brought up on the West Wales coast. Um, so Wales kind of west of, 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 um, of England, um, and it's about, I suppose, just under two hours by car, windy roads to the coast. Um, I grew up there and I went to school there and all I knew is that, you know, I, I just wanted to do art really. There you go, there's a bit. Um, and uh, I knew that I just wanted to do art and those are the days really when um, they paid you to go to university or, or to college. No, don't do that anymore, you have to pay. But um, they, they pay you. And I went to my local one, which is Carmarthen, which was uh, probably about 100 miles away. And then I did my degree in Cardiff and Newport. Um, Cardiff, the capital of Wales, down on the south. And then I did a teacher training course for a year. And um, I taught in lots of schools, secondary schools, had a department in a, in, in a couple. And then I went uh, full time, so a professional artist and haven't looked back really, it's been, it's been great. Didn't really plan on COVID, but actually COVID has, hasn't really affected me too much. I've done lots of these, but I just, I'm just in the studio painting now. So it's, I'm just, just developing work and it, it's, it's lovely really. Um, I've got working galleries, um, but obviously that's, that's kind of a bit hit and miss at the moment, um, whether they're open or not, but I'm developing work and building up work. So that's kind of me. Um, I also offer workshops uh, kind of locally and nationally here and also tutor on um, painting courses in Italy and, and France. So I was tutor, tutor, tutor in, in, in Italy this summer, but that kind of didn't happen. But it's, it's, it's France next year, so that's, that's fine. And I do plein air stuff, so it's outside. Um, I work with acrylics and oils. Um, I work on paper, on board and canvas. Um, at the moment I seem to be doing lots of acrylic, lots and lots of acrylic really. I quite, I quite like that and I do like my colour. So if you look at my website brushmark.co.uk you'll see the type of work that I do. Um, and it's, it's kind of this kind of work but also I'll show you some canvassy bits and pieces. So I thought this evening um, I sent uh, Diane uh, an image, actually I sent her one image which was 
a view of an estuary near Aberdevy, near Aberystwyth on the West Wales coast. And then I've changed that because I, I want to do something kind of a bit similar to this so I can show you this and it's a bit more expressive. So this is on paper. Um, so we all kind of work in sketchbooks. I'm sure you kind of work with lots of different sketchbooks and uh, biros and pencils and coloured pencils or whatever. So I use kind of little sketchbooks. Um, I quite like these these long sketchbooks. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of traditional, I suppose. So I'm working with with pen and with watercolour washes and things like that into these sketchbooks, but also with biro, etc. And then on a bigger scale, this is A3, I suppose. Uh, I quite like the A3s that are landscape, so that I can kind of work um, on my on my scenes, my landscape scenes, etc. So these these are 2B pencil, 2B, 3B pencil, I suppose, with washes of watercolour or acrylic, and I just go out and, and, and do those. So uh, pencil, uh, Conte, always got a sketchbook, really. Um, but quite loose so you can see I do like my colour but I also like my line and I think it's the lines that uh, is is the big thing for me lines of colour um, so I'm transferring the drawing I suppose into the painting so a lot of my work a lot of my painting there's aspects of drawing within that um, also the compositions um, yeah, I do like my perspective and ways in so leading you into a in composition and trying to keep you into that composition so it's trying to kind of lead you in that way so if I can show you some work before I get going give you a bit of an idea um, some of the uh, demos that I do uh, still life or landscape or portraiture or, or whatever this is uh, just a little exercise where we were looking at um, three different types of red, a crimson, a cadmium red, and a vermilion, and how it works with my colour. And this is just on watercolour paper. And then another demo, again, for society. So just explaining kind of a process. So this is acrylic, but working with lines of colour uh, to kind of carve and sculpt um, some still life. So it's not finished, it's just showing a process as I'll do this evening, really. Um, but just to give you an idea and then this was a couple of weeks ago when it was really quite warm here this is just in the garden so this again is is working on blue or kind of gray paper um, so uh, this is acrylic on pastel paper and that's what I'm going to do this evening so you can paint with acrylic on anything really it doesn't matter you don't have to prime it really um, it's a porous surface here but um, I'm just drawing into it and then painting um, over the top and using a similar colour to the background to almost rub out, Hello. but to kind Hello. of work with that colour. And you then, hold, uh, hold on just a moment, look. Sue? Yes. Sue, yeah, we need yes. you to put yourself on mute, please. And then some of the courses that I do abroad. So just to give you an idea, I, I work on lots of different colored paper really when I'm, when I'm kind of out. Uh, this is Conte. So this is kind of black Conte, um, which is, I'm sure you're aware, um, it's kind of a plasticky charcoal really. So you can kind of work with it and you can rub a bit of it out, I suppose, but it stays there, it's semi-permanent. And I quite like the black. You can get lots of color, but I quite like the black. So this is just a demo in the morning on a course last year where I did a drawing and then introduce acrylics into it um, and then paint and draw back into it again. Um, just in a few of these, which was quite nice to see. So there's a chateau that was next to it, uh, which they had the free run of. Um, so we're kind of in the grounds of that and just kind of working. So it's combining the drawing with the painting. And then just up the road in, in France, uh, a little kind of hamlet. So again, this isn't finished, it's just a sketch, just with paint, but just to kind of organise a, a composition, thinking about that. And then when I go on holiday, been to Kefalonia a couple of times in Greece, I always have um, a suitcase that's that big. 
So I take a board with me and I take my paper with me instead of rolling it back up and I just kind of go to the beach. So this again is working with Conte and with uh, acrylics. And you can see how the way the black is working with those. Just whiz through a few. Again, similar here. You can see how that's kind of working, I suppose. Just kind of washes of acrylic. And then before I move on to, to more paint, this is another one. This is, is on the West Wales coast. So this again is, is drawing on top of the acrylic and then painting the acrylic back on top of the, uh, of the contour of the drawing, really, I suppose. And then moving to, um, to kind of urban areas. Um, so this was on a course in Tuscany. So you can see the colours, the kind of ochre colours. And I tend to use uh, flat brushes a lot. So um, I would construct the whole thing with a series of kind of lines and, and flat brushes um, and just build up uh, those kind of layers and think about the kind of contrast really with those, those colours. And then this one was in London. Um, this was last year. I taught a, a, a lad, um, he contacted me, I haven't seen him for years, and he said, oh, Mr. Warner, still calls him Mr. Warner. And he said, um, I'm an artist, and can you come to London? Can you come into the centre of London? Can you bring your easel, paint a scene in London, and then I will paint you painting that scene in London, and there'll be a, an exhibition of his work and this next to it. So this was one of two uh, sketchy paintings I think I did uh, on that day. He's got the other one. Um, but again, it's just working in the centre of a busy banking area within London, um, which was lovely, really. Just, just kind of working with that. And then just a couple of drawings. So in Spain, in Seville, uh, this again is, is watercolour on watercolour paper with um, permanent pen. Lovely. The palace that's there in Seville. And then kind of a pen and wash, I suppose. Um, kind of a, a water soluble biro um, by a fountain in Seville again but great thing that happens with that is that you get um, lovely kind of colours kind of turquoisey colours that kind of bleed out really which is which is fantastic so that's working with that right I'm going to get going I think so this one here um, is another one I did of a similar kind of area and I'm going to do something kind of a bit similar to this, but I'll show you the process. So bear with me. Mark, Mark, okay. would you like me to uh, do a screen share and show the photo that you sent me? Yeah, you please, quick? yeah. Can you see yeah. it before you start? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I use one of these, um, these kind of arms that cling onto the easel here for my iPad, so. Um, they're, they're great. I'm sure you've got something like that as well, really. Okay, where what did I do with it? It's this one. So while Diane's doing that, I'm just going to share with you the photo that I'm going to use, which oh. is similar to the painting that I saw yeah. just uh, up the coast a bit. But this is just blue um, pastel paper. It's Winter and Newton pastel paper. There it is. Okay, there it is. So uh, going to look at, this is quite, um, quite a cloudy day. I'm going to bring a bit of sun into this as well. Um, but I tend to work from, if I'm in a studio, a photo, but maybe include another photo where I like the clouds or whatever. So I'm going to kind of work with a couple. I've done this scene a few times, so um, or done paintings around there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start. So I'm going to use something called frog tape we call it fry i don't really got anything like this here it's a diy tape yeah probably have um and it's a tacky tape and they use for um i suppose not letting the paint seep through when you're decorating your house um i've got a line going across so i'm just going to pop this on there don't have to be too precise really so you're just going to pop that on top there it's just the top bit that I want to be the line. Okay, so when I do these demos, I tend to use a lot of these. I've got loads of these disposable palettes. I'm sure you've kind of used them as well. Um, so I'm going to use that today. 
and I'm going to start with a cerulean blue, which is kind of like a sky blue, kind of a light blue. And <clears throat> a little tip for you, whatever I do, whenever I paint with uh, on paper or on watercolour paper or whatever, I, I get a strip of that colour and I pop it at the side so that when I'm mixing my colours, pop them back on there and you can see what's happening with those colours. That's really, really, really important. Okay, let's go. So I'm just going to use um, a kind of a DIY brush really here that's been well used and I'm going to paint straight on. I'm not going to use any water. This is really important as well for me. Um, straight off, straight out of the tube onto this. So I'm going to paint straight onto the top of that surface. Now the way that I'm painting that ground, because that's just a ground, is really important because in my paintings I try and create um, a kind of movement within it. So yeah. the underpainting, the ground again, is really, really important for that. So I'm going to work quite quickly. Thinking about the shape, and if you if you try and remember that photograph, um, you've got these kind of waves of, of, of cloud as well that's there. So straight into that. It can be quite thick. And remember I'm going to go over the top of this with clouds afterwards. Just pop that in. And this cerulean blue is the first colour that I use within a painting and it tends to be the last colour as well kind of brings it together. That's it. And then a bit of white. So there's my body colour. Introduce a bit of white to that. Tiny bit of white. Tiny bit of water. It's like cooking this really. Painting's like cooking really. Tiny bit of water. And I can see that. So if I pop it onto the side here, that looks totally different to when you put it onto that coloured ground because um, it's reacting with that colour. So blending it through, a bit more of that, a bit more white, tiny bit of white, just a change in that tone. And acrylics tend to, um, they go a bit lighter, don't they, as well, the colours that, that you, when you put them on there. So always try and go a bit, a bit lighter than you want it to be. White again. And down to that tape line. And another thing within my work, um, you probably can't see it here, but um, whether I'm on canvas or, or on paper, I tend to have part of the paper or canvas um, peeking through so I don't go over everything and it, it kind of unifies it so if you've got a coloured ground that coloured ground is just peeking through in parts so, so I'll, I'll start on the, on the bottom bit in a minute and let this dry but I just want to make it slightly lighter This is the horizon line. So this is that line in the distance. And along the distance on the horizon line, you get different shafts of light. So it may be slightly, the photo that I'm, I'm looking at here, the sun sets in the west. So you get kind of yellow bits going on, you get orange bits going on, it gets lighter. It's usually about 15 miles, isn't it, before the, the earth goes round. So there's quite a distance there, really. So I'm just going to make it slightly lighter in parts. And you can go over this again. Come and see my wonderful show. I'm learning to paint them. Guys, Thea? landscape. Thea, we, we need you to mute. I will just leave it. Yes. Oh, you left. Yeah. yeah, I need that. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Thea. Yeah, might need someone to mute there, I think. Can I mute her? How do I mute her? You can probably do that, actually. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so just going to put a tiny bit of 
cap in yellow and some white with a new brush, a flat brush. Again, this is just a ground, remember, it's drying as we're going along, tiny bit of yellow. So it's an off-white. Doesn't matter if it goes slightly green, that's not a problem. Mix it into some of that. And I'm just changing that color, just in parts, breaking that up. Slightly lighter. That's it. Okay, that will do. Just wash my brush. Okay, it's going to take that away. We've just, we've just created that, that horizon. And the next color I'm going to use is, or two colors, I tend to use these Winsor & Newton um, professional acrylics. Um, get them in different sizes, and like big ones, 200, or there's these 60 ones that are here. I'm gonna use a, a cobalt turquoise and a cobalt turquoise light, okay? These two colors, and to me, they're, they're very sea colors. So I'm going to use the darker one first. I've got a different. There it is. And it's that cerulean blue that underpins everything. I'm going to work with the limited palette, um, but the brush. So that colour straight out the tube is that gorgeous colour there, which is that. And again, it looks different there than it does on here. Um, and again, I'm going to use that and a bit of Prussian blue. So it's kind of like a darker blue, a dirtier blue really, I, I call it. There it is. So I'm going to start to mix a bit of that with that. To make that slightly darker. There it is. A bit of water. And then I'm just going to, at the moment, I'm going to pop that in there. So I'm going to work with a bit of water and just fill in. So again, we're underpainting. It doesn't matter about any of this. Um, this colour isn't going to be that dark either because it's quite light towards the top, but it's just a colour to put down so you can work back on top, really. So a bit of white, it's on the other, the other palette. Some water. Just popping in. Some colour, there you go. And actually, on the left-hand side, you can't see that image. There's a pier, so there's a, um, there's like a promenade and a pier. And that will be just above the water, so I'll kind of work on that. Um, and this bit here, you can see kind of that image, really. Um, so we've got, obviously, the, the pier, etc., is there. You can see that. Uh, and then we've got this inlet, this kind of rock pool, so I'm going to kind of work with that. So I'm just thinking about those shapes. So when I take people outside and we do painting or, or whatever, particularly abroad, you kind of, you go and look at a, a landscape and everything is really green and everyone goes, oh my God, it's green. Uh, the way that you kind of look into it really, I think, is that I look at shapes. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at shapes within this, I'm looking at colour and that detail then comes afterwards. So let's keep going. So we've got this this light colour and I'm going to just fill in areas. Colours will change. That cerulean blue with that. There it is. 
some paint on top and I'm going to make this this down at the side here just bigger. That's it. Just slightly darker. Just take it up to the edge. That's it, slightly lighter. And then kind of much lighter, just with some white. Just think about that shape. So I can be really, really loose. It's like I'm drawing. And within this composition, I've got these rocks that are going off uh, into the distance in perspective and my kind of focal point is there and actually it's quite interesting because there's a light there So these rocks to make them flat are kind of doing this As I'm kind of going along obviously in, in perspective. So my drawing underneath Kind of has to be in that direction to accentuate that Quite rough And I'll work on those rocks in a second. Just putting a bit more paint down so that I can paint over the top. So I did one the other day, I've done lots of these zooms, but I did one the other day and there was um it was about 87, I think 87, I think it was the last count, which is, which is loads, but I can only see one side, so it doesn't really matter. If there's at any point through Linda, I suppose, if you wanted to ask a question, that's absolutely fine. So just adding a bit more color onto the top there. Okay, that's enough. Just clean my brush. Okay, so I'm going to introduce a bit of uh, burnt umber and some Prussian blue, which I've already got there, and a tiny bit of cadmium red. Maybe crimson, doesn't really matter. Again, it's about tone. So what I'm trying to do now, I suppose, is organise some kind of tone. So here we go. So I'm starting again. Every time I'm mixing a colour, <clears throat> it comes from the middle body colour. So I'm introducing that burnt umber into that cobalt colour, going slightly darker, and just playing with those colours quite loosely, adding a bit of that red, it's going slightly purpley brown, and that's okay to start with. And the reason being is that that colour then has come from this colour, so it, it's talking to it, so it, it kind of relates to it. Okay, so just kind of roughly, again, introducing washes of this in that direction. Not committing to anything at all, just kind of working with this, building up. okay and then there's some rocks on this side and again you're just using a reference aren't you so you're just using an image as a reference and at the end of the day you're not going to have that next to that so when this is up on the wall or whatever um, it'll just be that that will be gone so this has to work um, so it's just a reference point <clears throat> So just building that up, I'm going to make it darker, put a little red with it, tiny bit of Prussian blue, it's got purple, that's nice. So introduce those colours into that. And 
that's it. And all this will change. So I'll kind of work on this foreground anyway and build another color on top of it. That's not a problem. So we're just building up layers. But the important thing is it looks messy. messy. My art teacher would kill me probably. But actually, it's I have a system, so it's it's that body colour, and the others are being coaxed in quite loosely, really. Okay, wash my brush. I'm going to work on this top bit now. So, so that is dry. So that's okay. <clears throat> okay, next bit. I'm going to use this this brush. This is about a 28 brush. It's, a, it's an old brush I've had for years. Um, it's quite soft, it's um, synthetic, but sometimes you can get really soft brushes. They won't do what I'm gonna ask, you, ask it to do now in a second. I'm gonna create these clouds, and have a look at my work, you'll see that. Um, but I'm gonna build up these clouds with darker to lighter, but with fissures, so little edges of those. Okay, gonna need another. This, that one. This time we'll need quite a bit of white. And I'll use some of the Prussian blue that's on this one and some of the brown. <coughs> no water. So this is really important. I'm going to take this, this brush for a walk in a minute, but no water. So I've looked after this brush for years. It's, it's kind of getting there, but as long as you clean these brushes almost straight away, you're, they're actually fine. Okay, so some Prussian blue, mixing that up. Slightly darker. I'm gonna work with my mid-tone for clouds now. Really mixing that up. There it is, quite a lot on there. Okay, I need to think about the direction of these clouds and actually um, this kind of underpainting, you can see there's bits going on, there's lines of, of, of the clouds that kind of drift in like so and then kind of go out again. So I'm going to build this up. So this is it. So I'm just touching the surface and I'm going to take this for a bit of a walk and it's the fissures, it's the ends of this that are doing the business really. And it's how this reacts with that color underneath. So that cerulean blue, going darker to light, is really important underneath. And again, I don't want them to be Simpsons clouds. I don't want them to be little kind of clumps of clouds. They have to be kind of irregular. I'm not looking for any kind of symmetry really within those because that will that will ruin it. So slightly darker, just taking that off. And I can bend them around so I can take them in different directions. So what I'm doing is creating a kind of a mid-tone cloud really. So there it is. bit more so we'll go again so I've got my white and then my Prussian blue and a tiny bit of burnt umber just taking the edge off that really and even possibly some of that color that I've used here yeah I can see a difference in that so I'm going to use a bit more of that quite like that so you've got what you're trying to do is make that work with that really there it is, it's got a kind of a darker feel to it, but a bit of a bit of red really, with some warmth in there. So I'm using all of that palette to pick that out. There it is. And just above those that horizon, you get clouds that just hover, and we'll come, come back to that again in a bit. So a bit of that kind of purple that's down here and I can see that there it is I can see it kind of there so obviously with a demo 
you trying to you're trying to rush through to give you as much information as possible that's kind of how it works and try and do different things obviously if i'm working with this you're taking probably a lot more time with where you're putting these clouds and how you're moving those so it needs to be lighter behind here so another way into this would be when i'm doing that when i'm doing this ground is to make this really much lighter so that i wouldn't have to put bits on top really a bit of red purple i can see a darker blue here so i'm going to introduce a bit of darker blue there and i'm going to bend that around just dragging it on that surface remember it's not the end cloud it's it's kind of a middle tone i'm going to put darker and lighter really on top of this and acrylic dries doesn't it it can be your enemy and it can be your friend it's how you kind of work with it okay let's go some prussian blue slightly darker oops there it is <clears throat> okay brush is drying so i need to kind of work a bit quicker that's it to so make sure you really mix that paint in there there we go so it's darker just underneath i can see it darker here doesn't matter if it goes over there because you're going to work on that again that's it and we'll come back to this afterwards with some lighter lighter touches So they're kind of sitting. They're a bit at the moment. They're a bit, ch -ch 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 bit chunky. So I need to, I need to vary this a bit. Kind of make this area slightly bigger, possibly. And just spread that out. Okay. I'm going to bring a bit of light into it at the moment. Actually, I'm going to bring in some white. No water on my brush, remember, because it won't do what I want it to do. So picking off that surface, where is it? There it is. So it's just picking out those little highlights, those little fissures. Probably a thinner brush. I'll probably use a thinner brush in a bit. And there, there's a hill here and there's some buildings. So I'll work into that in a second. Tiny bit of yellow. Okay, I'm going to leave that for the moment. Okay, we'll come back to that. Brush my brush. That's the most important brush, really. So I need to make sure that that is clean. Set. So what we'll do, but not yet. Obviously, um, Diane is have a break for everyone in a bit i think we're okay at the moment okay so if i go back to my batter brush okay i'm going to come down on here now actually what i'm going to do i think is the is the uh there it is my blue so my cerulean blue with my white I'm going to create a coastline. So there's a coastline there that bends round. So I'm going to put that into the distance, which is this cerulean blue with, with white. Just working out how blue I want it. And it'll be darker. Okay. It's almost pure cerulean blue there, I think. That's it. A bit of water.
and this kind of comes towards the center and this is just my coastline that's in the distance that's it don't have to be too precise but that's okay i'm going to leave it there and then just above that we've got the promenade so I'm just going to use similar colours that I've used so far. So I'm using this Prussian blue with a brown. Just to make a kind of a darker blue, really, a kind of a muddy blue. Let's see how that works. And that is there, it needs to be darker. And these bits you can um they're just they're just shapes, they're just shapes in the distance that you're you're kind of filling in really, which is not a problem. So I'm using that, that burnt umber and that blue just to make a kind of a bluey grey. And I'm gonna take that kind of all the way along there just for the moment. That's it. And then I can work with this rigger brush. I tend to use quite a few of these kind of rigger brushes, these thin brushes. I've got loads and loads of them. So I'm going to create this. There's a castle here and a little monument. Just go darker. Again, it's slightly green, but we're going to paint over the top of that afterwards. So I'm just filling in that area. There it is. And then there's a series of promenade houses that are different colours just along there. And again, I can paint over the top of that afterwards. And then there's a there's a hill. There's a kind of a hill that goes just beyond there that kind of holds it in. So again, a bit of green, a bit of hookers green. Slightly darker green. Set. And a bit of Naples yellow. Set. Let's just pop that colour in, slightly darker green, but again, we're just putting that colour in. It's not that green really, but it's kind of greeny blue. So we go back to that other colour, possibly with a bit of that cerulean blue. And just fill that, that in there. And then you've got the beach, a bit of green there, but that's fine. We can put a bit of lighter, Naples yellow on top. And a bit of the red. So we're just playing with those colours, those limited palettes. That's there, just throwing that in. And then there's changes in the buildings, just, just colours, just various colours that are there. The prom, just go over the top of that. And that's kind of enough. And then we can start introducing the colour down here. So I just want to change this C now. So I go back to my flat brush, go back to my lovely turquoise, darker turquoise colour, and then start introducing some white and a bit of that cerulean blue because you're going to get the reflection now. This is quite light. So I can see that that colour is quite light. The darker bit for me is only just the top bit there. 
and again quite loose and no waves the waves and the, the water is done much later on it's just built up on top so it's the dark working with that that light on top but we know that it's parallel to the bottom of the page we know that it's kind of it's flat it's sitting on the floor so these marks have to be in that direction and then we can start bringing the light of that water but introducing some other colors to it so going back to your palette and picking it off some of those other colors that are there so you're changing that turquoisey color So beautiful flat brush. So this, this flat brush, what I'm doing is creating a puddle, I suppose. So we're kind of doing this. We're taking this for a walk. So we're creating that puddle and it makes this whole thing sit, which is what you want it to do. We don't want it to stand up. So again, gradually, I'm not mixing my color. I'm just popping that color in and saying, oh, I finished, that's it. I'm just building up layers in the same way. So I'd be painting in a similar way throughout the whole of the painting. I'm sure you you know painting goes through three stages. You've got that you've got that really exciting bit at the start where you're really getting into it. You've got the middle bit which is a complete nightmare at times and you've got to have the bottle to bring it back and to kind of work with that. There we go. So the green with that blue that's nice. So just again picking up those colours. I can see the rocks that are kind of coming forward. Just changes in flat colour. That's it. So slightly lighter. red to give it a bit of purple and it looks kind of all the same but you can start to look for the changes the patterns the shapes that are there those flat shapes so there's there's red here in my Because you get seaweed, that seaweed can be red, it can be orange, it can be slightly blue. That's it. And then go higher. Go back to that turquoise again, go slightly dark. Think about this mid area. So no waves, just shapes. So that the waves will come out. A good little tip as well is if we use just pop that there. If you use this this lighter turquoise, this really quite this beautiful colour, when a wave breaks, you get that kind of translucence there, don't you? Really, as if you've got light going from behind it. So, again, as an underpainting, if you pop in a bit of that colour, that lovely turquoisey colour, just in parts, you can build your waves onto that. It can come through just a bit, not too much. Okay, that's enough. And while I've got this white here and this blue, going back to the cerulean blue that's, that's drying a bit now. So 
so lighter. And use um, a rigger brush to pick out above the coastline and then make that slightly abstract so it's not just one line. So it's, it's making the silhouette really. On all these lines that I'm using, I'm trying to introduce, I'm just thinking about tonal change and contrast really. So just going around the edge to make that stand out a bit. And then some yellow. That's it. And be bold, don't be afraid to kind of use certain colours. This, this kind of lemon yellow is gorgeous in the background because you've got certain bits of light that are peeking through. That sun is going down over that side. So we're just lightening that up a bit really. And to make it work, you kind of need to put some of that colour kind of almost into any parts of that and then you'd have obviously this bit on here so back to that light turquoise and just play with your colors the great thing about acrylics is that you just work on top of it Trying to get that horizon line slightly lighter because I can see that light going right up to the edge of that. There it is. And again, just parallel to the bottom of the page. So these are these are kind of random lines that are coming across with a trick of light. And there it is. too much of that turquoise because it just takes over so I'm going back to that Prussian blue so within my paintings you see on the website I've got orange and pink and uh, blue and they're kind of moved around so even though you may not see bits of pink or orange in the sky if you're putting a tint of that in there it's making those two sections talk so it's it's about unifying that painting. So I'm kind of accentuating, I suppose, the, the, the colour. I see it like um, a photocopy that, that when, you're, when, you're, um, when your printer at home has lost its ink and it loses a colour, you get kind of uh, dispersing the colour at the edge and get little kind of orange bits and pink bits. And that's quite nice to kind of work with, really. There we go. Right, so before I start working with that, you can see what I'm, I suppose I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get that solid base in there. Then I'll work back on top, get some landscape there, but kind of quite roughly. Think about darker going to lighter. This is much lighter here in the foreground, but obviously that will kind of come forward when we introduce that color and um, the structure of these rocks we can start kind of playing around with. Is that okay? Do you want to have a bit of a break? I'm not sure what time have we got. Jan doesn't look, she's kind of working away there. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it is 8.12. Um, we don't need to break. Um, is that okay? So what, what time do you normally finish? It gives me an idea of how much I've got really to kind of work with this. When are you thinking of kind of finishing off? Oh, we usually go like till nine, but whatever time is good for you. We don't want to no, no, it's off. fine. I've got, a, yeah, I could do another, you know, 40 minutes or whatever on top of this. This would kind of work. 
Go for it. Is that it. okay? Yeah. We just keep going, yeah? Yeah. We mind? may lose people along the way, but that's okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. As long as you're still awake, that's yeah. the main thing. <laughs> I'm still awake. You're awake. That's yeah, I'm awake. Okay, I'm getting in there. Um, the other thing, because you normally have a, we normally have a little break anyway for five minutes. It's not a problem. Um, you can go and get a cup of tea or another glass of wine. Yeah. I can't have a glass of wine really at this time because that would throw me. But um, okay, yeah. Why don't we take just a couple of minutes and you, you on a, yeah, convenience break or something just for a couple of minutes and then yeah. I'll carry on. Actually, I could use that. Come to think of it, it's all right. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, right. I'll just wash my brushes. You want to have a chat amongst yourselves you can unmute yourselves if you want that's fine you want to do that and have a chat or ask me beautiful. anything here. beautiful work yeah thank you who's that sorry oh that is jam oh jam oh, right how how are you you're right um so, as a matter of fact i need everybody's zip codes <laughs> um especially you mark what's your that zip sorry what zip code you're in <laughs> they may not have zip codes. Do you have zip codes? Yeah, but postal code. Yeah, zip code. Yeah. Yeah, SY12. SY12? 9QA. 9QA. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's going to freak the MCL grand out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you my full address. It's fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, we need it so we can send you your check. Yeah, no, that's so fine. I'll, I'll, I'll send address. you that in an email afterwards anyway. Hey, Jim. I might have a little yeah. sleep first, though. Are you there, Jim? Are you asking for me, Jam or Jan? It's Linda, and I'm happy to meet you. We've uh, communicated a bit. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's nice to meet you on online. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, how are you enjoying this? Oh, I love it. Are you? I, I'm not a painter, so this is all new to me, you know, when I'm watching. So one of the things I've really enjoyed about being part of this organization this year is that I'm seeing how other artists approach things. So I do digital art and photography. Oh. So watching people work with paint is, is really kind of exciting. We have a great yeah. photographer coming up in i think january or february bruce rosenteel mm -hmm. you see anything about him has i don't I know don't if he's been published yet but he does travel photography oh it'll be very much fun to hear from him yes yes yeah and he's also offered us um he's a, a volunteer curator in grapevine and offered us an opportunity to display in the gallery there oh that's great yeah, Lisa, Lisa's arranging that now. Thank you, Linda. That's great, so Linda. You're so welcome. I just like him so much. I, I, I've traveled to a lot of places he's been to, and his pictures of those places are ju just um, special, really special. He has a real good eye for, for capturing the essence of a place. That'll be fun. To, that'll be fun to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Linda, what's hey, your well, zip code? Okay. Pardon? What's your zip code? Seven five, oh no, seven six two two six. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. Nona Cross? Are you there, Nona? She may be muted. Yeah, she's... So are you guys yeah, quite yeah. quite near each other then? Is it in yeah. Louisville? Can you hear it? me? Well, within 20 miles, let's say. Okay. Yeah. No, no. What's your um, zip code? Seven five zero two eight. Oh, same as mine. Yeah, <laughs> <Okay>. mine. <laughs> Elizabeth Sonnen lives Sonnenberg? next door to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Elizabeth Sonnenbond. Where are you? What's your zip code, Elizabeth? she a member? I don't see her name on the list. I don't see so, her name on, on the member list. Okay. Does anyone work with acrylics then? Does anyone kind of I work like with acrylics? Yeah. Love acrylics. How, how, how do you my media? I switched to watercolor a bit mostly lately because it's lighter. 
and I'm older, <laughs> but I still love acrylics. Yeah, I kind of use acrylics like watercolor as well. So it, in a way, it doesn't. They're the same thing. It doesn't matter what you use. It's it's kind of how you use them. I just so, used to do big acrylics, so now yeah, I'm yeah. scaling down. Okay. Yeah. So you mean you work bigger? I I used to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I can I can show you briefly. I can do it at the end, really. But a a, a couple of paintings that that's quite big that I work with, I suppose. But you know, I I also use acrylics a lot as un, uh, watercolor is a lot as underpainting for acrylics. Okay. Okay. So again, this is this is with acrylics. So this is on canvas. They're kind of it's this size, isn't it? Really, I suppose. Um, so I do a number this this size and then bigger. Um, but no smaller than about A3 really, because I quite, I quite like working with these bigger brushes. Um, and I think, you know, uh, but also having said that, um, I have a whole set of rigger brushes. So I've got about 30 in a little kind of set that I, that I use. I work with oils um, as well as acrylics, but I tend to use watercolor brushes for the oils um, mm. because I like the fluidity of the of, of the brushes they have to be soft i don't like acrylic brushes that are really stiff don't like any oil brushes that are stiff so it has to have that kind of sinuous movement really um, and that's why i use those soft brushes so i do go through a few brushes um, but you have to kind of look after them really so it's kind of it's a lot of it's kind of a bit like this i can show you some stuff afterwards really but um, i'm going to mute now so everybody can hear what you say and Okay. You know, Brilliant. Mark, yeah. In, in your um, bio that you sent us, you said you work with oil and acrylic, sometimes in combination. You do. Yeah. No, 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 not combination of oil and acrylic, but combinations of maybe um, charcoal or or okay. uh, Conte with the oil or the acrylic. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, but if you're if you're working with oils. <laughs> sorry. I, I thought you meant oil and acrylics combined. So, oh, how does he do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. No, it wouldn't work with that. But you can work with oils in the same way. But it's just that you you have to be a bit more um, disciplined, really. I suppose when I when I paint, I'm doing a couple of commissions at the moment. But when I have a commission or I'm working on my painting, I tend to work on two of the same thing. So if there's a client out there that that wants this. That I'll work on at least a couple so I don't get stayed on it and I'll I'll use the same palette on both and then I'll be a bit more maybe adventurous on, on one and then I can take it uh, to them and then see what see what they think. Um, and do you do it's, all it's, landscapes? Do you do uh, no no not necessarily landscapes, ski, seascapes and portraiture I do classes in portraiture as well but it's oh. it's the same kind of process so again it's that three tones it's building up the layers and then working back on top oh, but I also with that. portraiture it's lovely working with uh you know with pencil or conte with that acrylic on top of the surface i'd love to see portraits sometime. well maybe we you can got do them on that your again website? <laughs> you got them on your website yeah there's there's a there's a portrait section on there there's some oil paints on there and uh, a bit of acrylic um I think those that I did a headmaster once, uh, I think fairly recently, which I put on there. So it had to be a bit more traditional, really, with the oil. But you can see how I used it. Okay. But you'll still see flicks of colour in it. So if you look at the portraiture, if you look at the still life, there's still lines in there. There's still kind of bits of colour that I'm kind of moving around. So it's that same process. Sounds wonderful. Right. Shall I crack on? Right. OK, so. What have we got? We'll come back to that in a minute. We'll come back to that. I'm just going to work now with a bit more detail with this foreground. Hopefully you can see that okay. When I look at this image, which is a shame you haven't got really, but I think maybe Linda can, can send it all to you or something afterwards so that you can, you can see it. But on that, I'm oh. thinking about, well, actually, I'll come back. I'm sure you turn uh, images that you use black and white sometimes, or if you do a painting and you're not sure how it's going, if you take a picture of it, turn it black and white, you can see the tonal changes that are maybe not working quite well. Um, so I kind of looking at it with lighter areas and it looks all the same, but actually it's not. There's kind of lighter contours areas on, on top of this. There's lighter bits here, there's slightly darker bits. Even this darker um, kind of rocky surface 
has got you know again different areas shapes of, of, of darker and lighter tone so as I work into an image uh, I'm looking closer at those shapes okay Mark um, yeah. can I say something to everybody yeah if you open chat down on the bottom of your screen click on chat it comes up over on the right side I did uh, post that image uh, you'll see uh, image 1782.jpg. Just click on that. It'll open up on your computer and you'll be able to see it while you're, he's painting. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. That's why I send it off really is that, you know, sometimes if you send it round or you can see it, it's easier to, to work out what I'm trying to do really. Okay, let's go. So using the same palette, it's drying a bit, but it's still important to use the same color. And then I'll introduce brighter colors to these palettes. I've got three palettes on the go at the moment. Um, okay, what are we going to work with? I think I'm going to work with um, the rocks. So there's a bright orange here, okay? Now the great thing about this gorgeous color is that I can use it as a mixing tool. And I, I kind of say this a lot to people, if you just use white to make something lighter, it can go quite chalky. Um, so if you get like a powder blue or a, a kind of a lighter colour and then just try and introduce that to certain colours, you'll find that that, that might work better because those colours will then start to talk to each other, if that makes sense. So having said that, that's a bright orange. So I'm going to work with, with that. And I'm going to put it straight on top, lost my water, straight on top of the colour that I've mixed previously, the kind of sea colour. There it is. Put another strip there so I can see what's going on. The good thing about this, if I'm, if I'm organised and I do it properly, if I put that close to it, wherever that is on that scale, and if, if I had sand or something down here and I wanted to work that out it's kind of important to to do that because when you look at that it just doesn't really work so it has to be there right okay now I need to make this darker so I'm playing I'm bringing in these colors this green there's a bit of that red and you can see it kind of changing we need a bit of Prussian blue or ultramarine doesn't really matter And I want a bit of life to it, so I don't just want it to be blue, flat. I want it to have a bit of luminosity. It's slightly brown, that's quite nice. And a bit of green, possibly. Okay, let's just go. Okay, I'm going to make this darker. It's not dark enough. <clears throat> I'm going back to that blue and a bit of red to make it a bit purple. That's nice. And then start to think about that with an iPad. Obviously, you can zoom in, can't you? Which is which is good. And I'm zooming in, and I can see green bits. If you look at your your photo, you'll see the seaweed is in there, and I've got kind of a darker orange and various bits that are in there so I'm just going to start to think about those shapes and then start taking this out into the sea remember we haven't done the sea yet so we'll come back to that some of that green Naples yellow And remember, like I said before, you're going to take this away, this photo away, and it will be this painting that you'll have. And it's it's the painting that needs to work. So we're using that just as a reference. I'm not gridding it out. I'm not copying it totally. I don't really want to do that. 
There's some orange, gorgeous colour on the top of this, with a bit of red. That's it, lovely bit of warmth. So I said before, I'm just accentuating those colours and just bringing that forward with these colours. If I had bright colours on the rocks, it's going to look a bit weird, so I need to introduce that bright colour into the sea as well at some point, but just kind of subtly. So some of that cobalt. That's it. And just move it around, move it around. You get bits that are just peeking through the rocks. Take some of that cerulean blue from the, from the start, throw that into the mix. Not washing my brush, because that's important. That's it. It's a bit like a stone colour. <clears throat> that kind of grey, there it is, grey blue that's come from that, which is really important, but introducing that cerulean blue to it. So I've got areas of this, which are kind of like light stone. That's it. And you can be really bold. The great thing about acrylics, I think, is that because they dry quite quickly, you just go over the top of them. You know, it doesn't matter. You can still go over with a lighter color when you've got a darker underneath. That's absolutely fine. So, while I'm there, not washing my brush, a sea colour. So I've still got bits of that colour that's coming out into that colour. I need to work out where those puddles are, rock pools. It would be dead easy just to mix white with that um, cobalt colour. but it wouldn't work with that colour that I put on here. It would be totally different. So introduce the cerulean blue to it because that's the sky. So that needs to be here. And in actual fact, if I make that really quite light blue and, and put it here, it, it brings it forward and it kind of works with that. So as I'm going along, you're just working out The shapes, flat brush, lovely flat brush. Slightly lighter. Now I'm gonna go for this now. So I've got white. this middle section is lighter I can see it much lighter here got to make sure I really mix the colors because those little lines of, of, of foam are put in again afterwards with a rigger brush so the detail would come back on top and then you get layers of the reflection of that, those clouds on the top of the of the waves. I think people make the mistake that they're drawing waves or they're painting waves. So we'll do a C and we'll just paint the waves, but actually the waves are created by the tone and the colour above. That's what it is because it's a reflection, isn't it? And it's just dark to light. So I've, there's my muddy colour. There's my muddy colour, and I can see that flat area muddy colour just varying that as I'm kind of going along. So these aren't the foamy bits, but I'm just making it recede a bit now, hopefully. So I can see this area being slightly darker, but it's got, it's got a brown tinge to it. Can you see it's got that kind of warmth coming through? So 
there's my really muddy palette. If I took some of that kind of ochre colour and just pop it into there, you can see there's a change in that colour. There's my C. It's the brown, it's that gorgeous kind of mid colour. There we go. It's how far, how much you're prepared to look, isn't it? You know, it's like someone's talking about photography and it's, it's how far you really want to look at something. And it's so important because you can go into, into kind of makeup mode. Okay, let's go lighter. I was conscious of time, so I'm just trying to go a bit quicker. <coughs> So I can see now, I'll look at it, there's a lighter area here. So there's a lighter, it's lovely, a lighter area there. And it's shining, it's, it's kind of, it's, there we go. There's a lighter area just cutting across it goes between the rocks and actually what I'm trying to create here if you can see with color so if I had orange and bits of orange and bits of orange there the colors leading you in hopefully to the image so you know we're kind of trying to take you around that composition Okay, let's bring in some of that cerulean blue. Scary. Make it a bit dirtier, a bit muddier. And now I can think about this foreground. Mm, okay. And there are bits of movement in the water you see then whether you can see that on yours so that blue hopefully is pulling it forward and then not just there we're kind of moving it around in the foreground possibly over here <clears throat> And that looks blue there, but actually when you put it with this colour, it doesn't look so blue. It's just, that's how colour works, isn't it? And at the same time, I've got that colour. Where else can I see it in the composition? Is it there? I think it is. So I'm going to let that kind of hang. And I'm going to use the edge of my brush. This is a flat brush, different brush to this. And start kind of introducing you see some of that colour into these clouds and it's it's having the bottle to play really I think that's what it is because we can we can mess it up for want of a better word but you're not going to kind of improve unless you push it a bit further so when I go on top of that I'll blend those in with that okay <coughs> so let's work with a rigger brush some blue So I've got a bit of green here, some hookless green, but it doesn't really matter. I can start thinking about making drawing with this brush now. So I've got my finger on the on the paper to balance, and I'm just trying to draw those kind of darker shapes. And as long as I move that around. It's darker here, isn't it? So again, 
starting with my green, <clears throat> bit of blue, let's throw some orange in there. That's it. I won't go mad yet with my colours, but I'm just starting to bring in just some of the kind of warmer colours, but they've come from the mixing that I've done previously. So we've got Naples yellow, which is your sandy colour. And I can kind of roll the brush or introduce it there. So these are some sand bits in the foreground to kind of bring you into that subtly bring you in. Slightly darker. Maybe even some of those ripples on that surface are the same colour. I'm going to go quite orange here. I'm going to make this up so I'm going to start introducing you see my lines you see what I'm trying to do with the lines I'm kind of I'm drawing with the paint now so it's this this thin rigger brush that now becomes my piece of charcoal or my pencil texture, flicking the brush so it's not all in the same direction. Where else is that colour? That could be over here. So there's a beach just here, so I could introduce that colour. There's some buildings, so we just put in some shapes. <coughs> Start to work with that. Change my brush. I can see that gorgeous turquoise colour is there. So these flat, this flat tones. Okay, I've got that, <coughs> that lovely colour. I'm going to pop it in here. And bring it forward. Wales in the Mediterranean, this is. And move that colour around. That's the, the big thing. Whatever colour you've got, you're pushing it around the composition to make it talk there. <clears throat> Now your waves are starting to appear. So you've got some lighter and darker kind of bits there. I've got this lovely flat brush, tiny bit of white with that turquoise color. Just hinting where those waves are. And the waves come down at an angle as well. They don't, they're not always horizontal, they kind of Move down a bit. Yep, get in there. Okay, a bit of blue. I'm going to go quite cerulean blue here with a bit of that turquoise colour in there. I haven't washed my brush. Impasto paint, so a bit more paint. Remember, this is that reflection, isn't it? It's the reflection of that sky. Pop a bit in here. Pop a bit. 
in here. Now, the other thing I do with this, this kind of Conte is that this needs to be dry. It's not dry now, and I could kind of work back into it with this. Um, it's probably not going to happen now because it's, it's wet. But that, what I can do, can't see it. I need to dry it with a hairdryer here. But if you can see, I can start to get some texture if I wanted to work with half and half and paint over the surface. Bear with me a sec. I'm just going to use this hairdryer so the sound will go, I think, for a second. That's woken the neighbours up, by the way, just by... Right, okay, so... It still needs to be drier, so I can actually, can you see, I'm, I can I can start to draw those little stones. It's not working because it's a bit too wet, but it needs to be needs to be drier. But you can see what I'm trying to do. Um, don't work with normal charcoal because it will just go everywhere. But it's it's the Conte because it's waxy. Okay. Detail. So let's go darker. <clears throat> Using a limited palette throughout really, so it's, it's that combination of a limited palette coupled with the bright colours that I kind of put on much later. Never really used black, always used kind of ultramarine and burnt umber to create that black. So now it's it's that Prussian blue with a bit of brown, bit of red. And start introducing some some lines. This needs to come forward, so this needs to be kind of much darker, really. So if we introduce a bit of red to it. just going lighter that's it so I've got my my lines here I'm, I'm starting to work kind of lines into it on top of that surface <clears throat> so this is this is um I think it's a one this 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 brush you know a naught is probably better, but I could start jumping ahead, really, picking up some of these kind of lines of foam with that brush. Using white, but then using the color that I just used, so it's not white. Is this too white? Well, you should be able to see it on the video. So just touching, tickling the page, but working quite flat. Now I'm jumping ahead here, obviously because of time. So there's waves here that would have these kind of little lines of, you see they're kind of sitting on the surface. That's, that's your detail. That would be a, a day later, probably. <clears throat> Thank you. 
and all the time that little trick so with you're making puddles it's making it sit flat on the surface and this goes off even the puddles are going off in perspective so the puddles are kind of flat but they're going off that way which is really important and then you could to make that top of the wave you could roll that brush just suggest that that's there Again, jumping ahead of it really, but I'm just trying to show you that process. So a wave, well, the, the foam on a wave is not white because the white is too far away from all of those colors that you're using. So it's kind of, it's an off white, but I'm using the white from the grays and the blues that I've used here. Again, that's, that's really important. That's why I've got um, three, four little palettes so I can dip in and out and play with it. So someone shared on, on chat there about um, taking a photograph, which is quite dull, and it is quite a dull photo, you know, and I'm, that's, if you, again, you look at a lot of my work, it's bright, so I'm just using it as a reference, and then I'm enhancing that, that's what I'm trying to do, I suppose. So there's yellow into this now, cadmium yellow, which is can be a bit of a nightmare, but it's it's lovely because I'm using that grey and it's not too far away from the colour that's there. Rolling that brush, making it flat. And also now I've got that lovely Gunji colour. Where is it? Is it up here? Yes, it is. So let's just throw some of that in. Look, let's just put some of that into there and maybe a line of it just there. And also some of that colour. There's a pier here. And maybe that pier just shapes and there's a top of the top of the promenade there was very thin line you see so I'm trying to just move it around just move it around that composition hopefully you can see that I don't know whether how far you can see really Okay, blue, so I'm working with that cerulean blue. A bit more obvious now. So let me take you through this. So you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you a process. That's really what I'm trying to do today. I'm not trying to complete a work there, even though we're kind of getting there slowly. Um, hold on, it's just there. I start with that cerulean blue and I'm ending with that blue. So obviously this is rushing ahead but I would the last color that I would put on for me would be this I get some detail and the great thing I think about this particular blue is it almost rubs away because it's quite close to that color underneath So a sandy colour. <clears throat> sand isn't just Naples yellow. It's not just that. It's it's a reflection of other things. <clears throat> so if I made that lighter, hopefully that would draw your eye in. The other thing I tend to use, 
uh, kind of old credit cards. So I cut cut these kind of cards up, and I use them. I'm sure, you do as well. So it's kind of almost like a palette knife, but I quite like like using these rather than a palette knife because I can come off the surface. So what I could do towards the end is get quite a bit of that on there, and I'm creating texture then on the surface. Let me just go lighter. Making sure I'm really mixing that. This is just an off cut of a, an old credit card, or a points card, or whatever it is. And I can start to, because I've got a colour underneath and it's a lovely flat surface, if I go over it really heavily, I'll get rid of that layer underneath. But if I just touch the surface, you, you, you're picking up. Can you see there's a there's a texture there? This works great with 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 a landscape, really. Um, which again, I'll show you. Been working on one today. I'll show you in a second. So I would just move this around. There it is, flat color. This area here. I'll be careful with this because it's going to take over. But remember, you've got foam, haven't you? So there's texture within that that sea area. And the other thing is when you're painting or when you're drawing is to try try different implements you know try a, a toothbrush try an old shoe <laughs> you know anything really that, that that may work for you I'm just putting that in there so i'm trying to balance that out but it's a it's a kind of gorgeous color so it's a lighter color I love painting so hopefully it kind of shows but I'm, I kind of do this all day I go for a walk in the morning about seven o'clock and then I come back and I'm in here all day really very lucky so we don't know whether that's going to ruin it or whether you're going to change it but you've got to give it a go That's a lighter version look of this. You've got to be careful that it's like a palette knife. You know, you can overdo it with a palette knife, can't you? You know, you just it just takes over and then all that gorgeous painting underneath is kind of lost. Um, I'm going to leave that there, okay? And I'll just show you a couple of paintings and then you can run away. Um, but hold on a second, let me just wash my hands. You can unmute if you want to unmute and then if you want to ask any questions, that's absolutely fine. You've got no excuse. It's not three in the morning, is it? <laughs> right, let's have a look. Marquette is so beautiful. It is. I really like the depth of the of the water, the way that you can almost see through it. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you. It's it's a process, isn't it? Obviously, I've been doing this a bit. This is a process on paper, and what I'm trying to get across, I suppose, is layers. You know, and, and watercolor, watercolor is sometimes, and I, I paint with watercolors, you're kind of filling in areas a bit like a jigsaw. And I think you've got to be careful sometimes with that because it can work out quite flat. And what I'm trying mm -hmm. to do, I suppose, is, is, is probably start with a mid-tone and then I'm going lighter and I'm going darker. What I didn't do on the clouds is get a thinner brush and pick out the highlights of those clouds that come forward. You see, you know, the glints, the edges of those clouds. Let me just get you another painting. So this one I haven't finished. I only started today, and it's a commission for somebody, but it's quite bright colour. So this is quite different, okay, um, to the way that I've just worked, I suppose. This is in Shropshire, in North Shropshire, we've got these glorious hills. They're lovely, beautiful hills, Shropshire hills, and they're kind of winding paths. I don't know whether you can see that, but I'm... I'm, I'm kind of accentuating those colors, aren't I? So the path there is, is, is kind of mauve. And I'm trying to think about light 
it's, it's no way finished okay but i'm just i spent today kind of playing with this really um what you think mm -hmm. very nice your, cl your clouds are so pretty on the demo then, another one well you can see that again for me it's about contrast isn't it and it's about composition so what i was trying to create there is not a flat landscape but something that leads you in look look this is done with that um credit card mm -hmm. thing again just on top mm -hmm. it's got texture so it, it leads you in at the start and then i've got this kind of bend and then it goes darker you can probably see these on the website anyway i think these are these are on there it's beautiful Hello, Mark. On the demo piece, were you using just canvas or a stretch canvas? Um, it's stretch canvas. I've got a, a supplier that I that I use that's 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 pre-stretched, um, but they're good canvases. Um, so I tend to stick to certain sizes unless I get a commission where they want a particular size, and then I'll go hunting for one or get it made. Okay. Um, but you you did the demo on paper. Yeah. 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 Oh, so well, the demo, I was wondering about the demo. The demo was not on canvas. No. So the demo is on is on paper, and this paper here is pastel paper. Um, it's blue, but there are other colours, obviously. And if you if you use an orange paper, for example, whatever colour you're putting on top, you've got to work with that colour, haven't you? You know, you're not getting rid of the orange. You're, it's quite interesting. It's quite. It is really interesting. I'm it. Yeah. So if you if you worked on this, even though it's a it's a blue bluish seascape, if I use green or if I used, you know, I don't know, orange or something, but paint it in the same way and it has a different effect, doesn't it really? So um, when it's done, do you mad it or do you stretch it? Yeah, I haven't got them. They're inside actually. I've I mount them like this. Wow. So they get varnished, so I varnish them. I always give my paintings, whether on paper or on canvas, <coughs> a varnish. Um, and if they're on paper, they go behind glass and they get kind of double mounted like that. So it would be kind of like this. Mark's got a very good framer. He's good for me and he always he does it in quite good time, really. Um, and then there's, there's glass that kind of goes in front, really. And then the canvases have a floating, a floating uh, frame, which okay. you've probably seen before. So that that kind of sits behind, so you have a gap that kind of goes behind. Like the one on the wall, yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. So like the one on the wall. Um, yeah, I think that's probably it. I don't know whether anyone's got any questions or whether. You need to wake anybody up. <laughs> I, I think you kept us awake. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Sometimes my voice can be a bit monotone. So, so sometimes, but uh, no, that's fine. Well, that's good. Well, I think for us, your voice is real different because, you know, obviously I'm a different place. And so it's kind of, kind of fun to listen to. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> I think it was a wonderful demonstration. I learned a lot myself. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. That's very kind. Yeah, I've learned a lot too. It's yeah. amazing. Thank you. I've written all these notes and <laughs> you need I wish to get I didn't out have there and to do get it. up early and go to work in the morning. I want to go paint. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe need to have yeah. a portrait uh, session. Sorry? In future, we may need to have you for a portrait session. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, we can do another one in future. That's that's fine. It's up to you. Yeah, see what you think. So you're having a number of these with different artists that you have Everything locally or nationally. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, fab. Well, I'll Here. leave you then. If uh, if no one's got any questions, I don't mind staying and talking about stuff that's well, fine i didn't want to interrupt if someone has a question go on unmute yourself and have your question this is where everyone goes quiet <laughs> <laughs> i really enjoyed it like i said i'm not a painter 
but I, I love the way that your color pulls you into the, into the image. And so from a digital, dig, my yeah. digital art, that's something I'm always looking for ways to do so that it doesn't just sit and look like a photograph. So that, that was real helpful. So thank you for that. No, that's okay. I mean, another way around it is that I work on an iPad as well. You know, you can go and sketch with a, with a pencil mm -hmm. and things on an iPad, but um, another way around it is with things like Instagram and various kind of bits where you can just change the color, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> and you're not changing the color to copy, you're changing the colors just to see how it, it kind of works. And I think sometimes we all stick with something the same. So I've got this photo and that's it. Well, really, that's fine. But actually what I've done there, I suppose, well, it is quite dull anyway, really. Um, there are other ones here. I've kind of brightened those colours so you can play around with the settings in edit, can't you? And just make them. It's worth doing, really. Um, I did it today with the one I showed you, that bright one. Um, yeah. It came from a photo up in the Shropshire Hills. And then I've I just kind of enhanced those, those colours. Um, and it's quite nice to look at those. And when you look at those colours, that area, you can still see the light and the dark. Yeah. Hopefully you can see yeah. it here. But even though there's, there's, there are colours there, but there are flat areas of light and dark. And that's what I look at. That's how I see things, whether it's the face or whether it's apples or, or whatever, really. Um, it's very nice. Good. Well, hopefully I can see you again at some point. And... Um, with this situation that we're in at the moment, hopefully, <laughs> you know, I don't know what it's like. Well, I think I know what it's like over there, but it, over here it's, it's creeping up again. And I think it's because it's getting towards the winter with us. It's, it's the autumn now, isn't it? They're worried with the NHS being kind of overloaded, um, you know, with flu type things. So we may have another lockdown. We had one for quite a while, but um, the main thing is, you know, you stay safe. And be, be careful, really, um, you, too. you know, and take that advice. The, the other thing is, I don't have to wear a mask, do I? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Or yeah, one of those visors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, it's been lovely. So thank you for having me and um, good you. luck with everything. Yeah, thank you um, for contacting us. How did you find out about us? Did you, did you come across our website? Uh, no, I was just looking. I thought I, I do a lot of these in this country and I thought, well, why not have a look further afield? Didn't think about the time thing at the time. But um, <laughs> and then I, I think I started in, in Texas. I, I kind of came across, I think, yours and somebody else's. And um, so I just put a couple of flyers out, really. And um, it's quite it's quite nice for me to have someone, you know, everyone's the same, aren't they, really? But you're from a you know, a, a different country, and it's it, it, it is slightly different. Oh, this is very have you seen? Yeah. Have you very seen anything like this kind of process before? Do you have any artists that you that's similar in any kind of way, or not? Or well, I I have a a print that's hanging in our house that I absolutely love, lots of color, and I can see some similar um, brush stroke techniques and stuff, and I just love it. And now I've gotten to see how you do it, <laughs> so I can experiment with it now. You know, it's, uh... well, artists artists over the century have copied other artists. That's how that's how we 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 get there, don't we? You know, we have to. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't copy as such, but what you're doing is you're taking bits. So that's that's really important. Are you are you recording this? Are you? Yes. Are you yeah. Yeah. If you could send me a link, that would be good. If that's all right, but. Um... Yeah, no, that's fine. Well, I wanted to ask you, because um, we've been recording all of our meetings, but we haven't done anything with them. They're just sitting on my computer. They're huge files. Um, you know, do we have your permission to somehow maybe post it on our website so our other members can watch it who couldn't be here tonight? Is yeah, that yeah, I've, other people have done that. And I know some artists are a bit funny because some people make videos anyway, so it's almost like double taking. But I haven't got a problem with that. I mean, all I ask is, in return is that you just, you know, advertise me or my, my website. And um, Oh, absolutely. And again, if yeah. you guys want to want to look or contact me at all with colours, <clears throat> thinking about you forgot anything about this evening and you want to contact me and ask me a question, then 
just do that through the website, the contact sheet on there, and then I'll get back to you. Any anything, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. It's quite nice to hear from people anyway. Yeah, that sounds good. I just had checked your website while we were doing this, and I see that you also offer one on one. Can mm. you do a Zoom one on one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those something? kind of things. So if you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But yeah, you know, we can have a conversation about that. I do that. I do it outside plan air as well. But obviously, it's a bit different, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> You know, it's a bit difficult at the moment, yeah. but we can arrange it. But yeah, no, if you want to do that, or one or two, you know, paint along session, that kind of thing, or, you know, that's that's absolutely fine. Hmm. That would be, that would be interesting. See what we could work out. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mark. This has just been absolutely incredible. It's so exciting to be able to be talking to somebody over in England. It's just... No, that's fine. That's yeah. likewise. It's nice, yeah. isn't it? It's nice, to, yeah. it's nice to do that and break that up. Yeah. And thank you for accepting it and and good luck with with everything with your your you know your club your society and everything that you do obviously you're, you're part of the community by the sounds of things when that, and that's a that's a big thing with the arts i don't know about over there but over here particularly in schools art has been you know it's it's been cut a bit you know because of sciences and various things and Oh. Don't get me started on that, but you know I've taught in schools, <laughs> but um, it'll come back because people will realise that it's the creatives that that run most of the things. You well, know, yeah, we've just... got incredible art education programs in our schools around here, um, where we're kind of based. The facility in the art gallery there, they've got what is it, two or three months worth of the local schools exhibiting their art. And, and we do a scholarship program for the senior high. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. It's just amazing to see what these kids do. Um, well, maybe I can come over and I could do a res residency there and bring the kids in. That would be nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be lovely. But obviously not at the moment. <laughs> not at the moment. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> And if they can understand my voice, that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> oh, they can. <laughs> if I can, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark, so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take Have care, good everybody. Good morning, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm going to bed now. Yeah. <laughs> bye, bye. All right. Take care. Wait. Going to wash bye my bye. brushes. Bye, bye. Oh, that was nice. That was. Yeah. That was really good. Really good. Nice. Um, Thank you, Chuck. What kind of work do you do, Chuck? I um, I do environmental work. Uh, uh, I'm a re I'm I'm in the, with the regulatory agency that cleans up industrial sites. Okay. I think he meant artwork. Artwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, well, I'm I'm about to retire from that though. I do uh I do acrylics and watercolor mainly. Okay. And how would you, how would you work then? How would you approach it? Too tightly. That's what I have. <laughs> this is, this is, this is a good change. I do start with some of the, with, with acrylic. I mean, like you said, watercolor, you have to, you have to know what you're doing before the whole thing before you start. Um, uh, and it's like a jigsaw puzzle, but uh, with acrylic, I, I do start with, with some, washes for the major areas you know to get to get that color in and then go and then go over it um a, li a little tip i suppose if you're using acrylics and actually a lot a lot of people don't realize this if you're working on canvas with acrylics acrylics is a chemical it's a polymer isn't it yeah. and if you put we tend to put a wash down if you if that wash is really washy then over time It'll break. it doesn't bind to the canvas and it could peel away Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to be, you know, obviously now, but you've got to be careful. I think if you're working on canvas and you're putting less than 30, 70 or whatever, it, it could not grip. Do you see what I mean? It might not work, um, yeah. which is a real shame, <laughs> obviously. That would be bad to see it peeling off. Yes. Yeah, I would be bad, but um, you can use a, a gesso, can't you anyway, so to bind it, I suppose. Hey Chuck, I think you need to introduce your grandchild. <laughs> yeah, I can see one kind of. And one in the background there. Yeah, one year old. <laughs> toddling around. 
<laughs> she, she runs the house. She goes wherever she wants. Yeah, <laughs> they tend to do that, don't they, really? Right over there. Uh, no, oh. no. I do have another one, actually. They're still there. Yeah, let's see. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's, so that's mounted on a floating frame, isn't it? So it's got a little gap there. And this is this is acrylic on canvas. Again, it's the same process. And I tend to work with dark with the blues back to front. It's a bit like watercolour, you know, you tend to do the back to front thing, but it's the blues and then I'm experimenting with those colours. But if I'm putting blue there, for me it's important that I'm putting it there. Even that bit's really, really important. Mm -hmm. As it kind of balances that, I think, That's out everything. really. Looks, looks more natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mark, do you start off knowing kind of all the different, the, the main colors that you're going to be using? Or do you just kind of take a feel for that? Um, I do, yeah, I do have a bit of an idea. Um, but it's, I suppose it's, it's how much of that particular color that you use, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. um, if, I'm, if I'm doing a, a landscape, um, there may be a lot of green, but then I'm, I look, you know, there's a color wheel here, look, so, you know, opposites to, to green, you know, the red, it's, a, it's an impressionist thing really, isn't it, I suppose, or, a, mm -hmm. um, you know, a post-impressionist, near-impressionist, you know, with Signac and Sura, where the colors seem to be kind of vibrating on the surface because they're opposite colors. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it's quite nice to, to look at looking at that last one that you put up there with the paths down with the trees and everything those colors were something that i wouldn't have thought to put together but they're really beautiful yeah thank you i love the i love the the vibration in that but i would never have thought to put down the orange and the purples and that that's really pretty mm -hmm. well the purple's giving it distance isn't it so the, mm -hmm. the purple pushes it back um, the orange is coming and the reds are coming forward, aren't they? But then if you mix your other colours with those colours, then it pushes back. So if you mix the purple with the orange, you're getting this kind of darker brownie. So that's mm -hmm. kind of like a mid. You've got this thing going on. It's, it's me again thinking about shapes, but also thinking about three, three tones to everything. Um, okay. So if I'm mixing one particular colour, I'm mixing three it's tones of that particular colour. Mm -hmm. Again, it's very nice. And then the blue is key because the blue is mixed instead of white or whatever, mixing with the purple to make that kind of mauvey blue that makes sense. So even if compositionally it might not work, the color will work because it's come from that right. source. Does that makes sense. Yes. So that's my that's my get out clause. I, I like it. <laughs> Anyway, I better let you go, really. Well, that, that last painting that you just had up, um, did you have a photo reference for that, too? Yes. Yeah, yeah I did that. I did that a couple. Every I did time. that. Did that about three weeks ago, I think. Um, that's on the website. So I think a couple of those. I think on if you go into the for sale section, as a sold and they're for sale. If you go into landscape, you'll see those. So you can have a look a bit closer, really, and have a look at those colours. <clears throat> Obviously, sometimes when you take a photo, it changes the color, doesn't it, really? So, um, well, you really, you know, make everything vibrant and just um, add so much to it that, you know. It's, well, if it works, it works. <laughs> <laughs> but I, hard, but I, yeah, yeah, but that's fine. But I, that's, that's me, I suppose. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what I developed over a period of time. Mm -hmm. You can see the, how the drawing is coming into the painting. So the mm -hmm. drawing is important for me that it's there and it was it wasn't dry before but now can you see i can i can now start to if i wanted to to kind of draw back into it and it gives it texture but it also makes it slightly darker because this needs to be darker doesn't it? you know i when i saw uh what you wrote and um you said drawing had a lot to do with your paintings. I didn't see it so much in landscapes, but now I do. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I think if you 
Well, I can't show you any portraits or, but actually the, the still life things, you know, drawing into the painting is quite, that's the great thing about acrylics. You can't do that really with oils, can you? Yeah, also drawing had to come first, but I see how it can come after. Yeah. So that's lovely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And it, it could be that you use watercolour paper, so it could be white. It doesn't have to be this paper, but I'm using paper because I like to draw into it. So the other ones I'm not drawing into, am I? Because that's, it's... that's wonderful because I love drawing, but I didn't see when I looked at your seascapes how drawing entered into it until now. Okay, well, if, you, if, if you're sketching with watercolour or with acrylic, it's... Sorry. If, if you use a 2B or a 3B pencil, uh, when the paper is still a bit wet then it makes the it makes the pencil line darker doesn't it so it gives it that yeah that, that and I, darker. That, but I haven't seen it in your seascapes before and now i do yeah well if you have a look on the website you'll go it's like where's wally is he standing in front of you <laughs> no but it, you, you can have a look can't you and just you'll see those lines now we've mentioned lines and you've seen it you'll probably see more of those those lines really um, Great. Yeah. Um, now, I want to need to understand something. Were you saying you were drawing with the Conti? You, did you mean that you only do that when you're working on paper? You don't do that when you're on canvas? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really stick to canvas because uh -huh. of that waxy surface. So it's <clears throat> it has to have slightly a porous surface really for it to kind of work. Okay. Um, uh, and also it's it's slightly ribbed, isn't it, canvas? So it's it's got a texture to it. So, you know, it's not really, it could be that if the paint is still wet, you can use it to scratch into it, which is quite nice. Um, but on paper, I like, I like black because black with my color makes the color work. That's mm -hmm. for me. And you can get packs of Conte that is, that are different colors and they're awful. I just don't, I don't like working with, for me, I don't like working with the colored kind of charcoal, but the black and the paint kind of works really. I'm giving away all my secrets to you. <laughs> Thank you. you. Know what I'm doing. It's <laughs> just, that's it. That's my career gone down the pan now because I've given that over to you. All right. <laughs> Are you ready for sleep? Sorry? You, you must be ready to go, go tonight. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go now if you don't mind. It is now 20 past three in the morning. Yeah. Ooh, we need to... You need to go. Appreciate you so much. Thank I'll you. Just go for it. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll let you go. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming and being a part of this. It's really great. I thought it was a great dem demo. One of our best. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. And he contacted us. Through, you know, send an email oh. to our website. This time, more so than almost anyone. Yeah. So we were very fortunate, and um, now we're fortunate again with, with Bruce <laughs> and making connections. That's great. Bruce has, have you, have you asked to anyone what Bruce has offered? Hmm? Have you uh, advised anyone what Bruce has offered? Well, not yet. Lisa is gonna is working communicating with him to set up to do a um, you know walkthrough to go see. And she emailed me or texted me, I think it was, and and asked if you know we would want to do a three month instead of a two month. Oh wow! So that would be great because then we can switch our out different artists and stuff and. Yeah. Um, this is all we're, we're talking about a so Lancaster Gallery in um, Grapevine. In Grapevine, it's a theater there. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be able to um, display our artwork there uh, next year. And sell it without commission? Yeah, and there's no commission. So you get paid what, what you're asking for. Um, mm. And so, he's a, um, I guess, a volunteer program, pro, um, a volunteer uh, curator. 
curator, yes, exactly. Yeah. And he's offered that chance to VAL, mm -hmm. which I think is just wonderful. And yes. his photographs, which we will see early next year, yeah. are, are just wonderful. Yeah, I think a lot of people are looking forward to that presentation. It's too bad it's had to be delayed, but... You know, before he was scheduled to come this fall, but he got stuck in Guatemala because of COVID and he couldn't leave. Oh you dear. Know, then he felt like, okay, we maybe need to do things with a live audience. And then he said, oh no, I can see the future is with a, a virtual audience. But his, his photos are just stupendous, I think. I love them. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So, I guess we're going to all go to bed. Yeah. Elizabeth Sonabend, can you hear me? Can you, can you unmute and talk to me? Elizabeth? I don't know who that is. Is she a member? Her name, whoops, her name isn't on the list. I was trying to look her up. Yeah, she might but be I um, I need her zip code. <laughs> uh, Diane? Yes. I, I, I didn't, I was talking before, but then I realized I was uh, muted. Oh, uh, hi, Erwin. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I belong to Gap in Grapevine, and, and uh, we've had our work put in the uh, uh, Palace Theater there, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, but uh, you know, right now there's there never is too much traffic there. Uh, you know, it's. I mean, don't go in there thinking you're going to have high hopes. Let's put it that way. Oh, because you mean there's not, not much traffic? That, no, no going through right now okay yeah yeah well even before we had our work in there last year and it just seemed people kind of walk past that building because it's really out not really where all the action's at yeah and i know we're going to have two more shows there and i'm not even going to participate because it's just uh it's just that uh exciting <laughs> you know oh really unless they, okay. unless they do something uh you have to really have it there when they have a, a show or something going on but if they don't have a show going on there nobody goes in there it's just yeah, like it I, it, COVID or is it um, no it's just always like a, they have a lot of traffic unless maybe you have a show there yeah at the palace theater then people might be that you know they'll, they'll walk in the corridors and things but I, so i mean i'm just saying it's a great venue but don't have high expectations Okay. Well, Unless good, things good change, you know, but uh, is there any way we could do something? Oh, what is this, uh, the drawing room? Huh? The drawing room in, in Louisville. I don't know. I haven't heard of it. Well, they had something I read about it, and then I went online, and I don't know if you have to pay to have your work shown. There's a show there right now by some uh, uh, Asian lady. Uh -huh. I think it's in the bank building. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, the old bank building. Oh, I, oh, I, is that the new gallery? That yeah, the dead drawing. They call it drawing room or something. Okay, that's yeah. right next door to the MCL Grand, isn't it? Pardon? Is, isn't that the bank building that's next door to the MCL Grand? Yeah, I didn't cross the street. I'm not sure because I, I, I don't really know where, you know, I don't know the location of the building. Okay. But I was just wondering what opportunities would be there for us. Oh, well, we need people to go check it out, Arlene. <laughs> uh, no, I'm having a little problem walking these days, so oh. I'll pass on that one. But I, I went online and I wasn't able to get too much information. But, um, well, maybe I'll see if I can get the. Uh, somebody else interested in it yeah so. well uh, that's that's another kind of volunteer 
Yeah, I uh, think is uh, somebody yeah. go around and find us some more venues. Yeah, yeah. community pop up space. Okay, let's see. So, yeah. Diane, I've got a, I've got a, an email from uh, an architect that I need to probably share with you. Oh, oh yeah, I think we all got that. Everybody got that. Yeah, everybody got that. Well, I was going to ask. I don't know if that. I didn't really understand exactly what that was supposed to be. Well, I didn't at first either. Sometimes you get like weird spam kind of emails, yeah. and I, I, you know, looked up the company, find out if they were a legit company, and and I guess they are. Although I'm not impressed with them at all. Well, they they said that they were working with the city of Louisville, and that's what made me think that there might be a connection to to um, I don't know what 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 we've been doing. I, I have to leave now. So goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye, 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 Arlene. Well, we can take that conversation some other time. Yeah. Well, it's been Alfredo had gotten it. Just like yesterday, I think he sent it around to some of us and said, did you get this too? And so somehow okay. this company got all our email addresses somehow. I guess so. And, so uh, maybe they're, they said that they were trying to get something for, I can't remember now exactly what it was, but trying to get permission from the city of U, uh, Louisville to be able to have some community space or something. Yeah. Um, you know, it sounds like a good idea, you know, space for artists and stuff. I personally am interested I told. in it. I, but, I said, you know, I don't, it, I think that there would be a lot of yeah. questions before someone would, would commit to say that that was a great idea. But generally speaking, you know, I'm, I'm personally uh, behind most anything that promotes expression in an art artistic community so mm -hmm. that how that would be managed i wouldn't know yeah um it's just it wasn't something that i personally wanted to get okay. involved with so i, I just didn't respond i didn't it. really want i didn't really have time to mess with it i've been sitting yeah. on it for yeah, a lot of weeks me either <laughs> um, okay like I, said, I, I wasn't well, good. impressed with what they showed or you know the company is kind of vague i mean most of the pictures they had on their facebook page were two little boys doing construction stuff <laughs> like okay <laughs> are you the owners <laughs> <laughs> probably his kids or something but probably so just didn't come off <laughs> uh, so. okay well I'll, i'm gonna sign off Okay, good night. Good, good night. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, maybe. <laughs> there okay, we go. Well, I'm going to I'm going to end it. Here we go.